Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat. I am Gina from Gina K Designs. Let me turn my phone down here because I monitor comments over here. Sorry about that. Welcome to Stamp and Chat. It is great to see you all here. We missed you on Monday night, but we hope that all of our USA friends had a great holiday weekend, and all of you from all over the world had a great weekend as well. Well, today I decided to do something that might be helpful to some of you. Um, let's see, last night at midnight, our stamp timber set went live at Simon Says Stamp and it had a huge response and it sold out very quickly. And lots of you got it, but some of you didn't get it and you were a little bit disappointed. So what I thought I would do today is show you how you can use other stamp sets by Gina K Designs, some that I know a lot of you already have in your collection, to create a similar style card. And I think it'll be a lot of fun to do that today and I hope that you enjoy it as well. Hello, everybody. I see people coming in from all over the country and all over the world. Yes, don't be too disappointed. Remember, it is, it's a stamp set. And I promise you, we're going to keep coming out with new stamp sets and we're going to come out with things that you love. Maybe even more. You never know. All right. So last year, maybe it was last year, maybe it was the year before I start to get all of my uh, kits mixed up because we've been doing, can you believe we've been doing kits since... 2008. That's right, Tom. Did you know that? I don't know. 2008, we started doing kits. So that means we've been doing kits for 13 years, if my math is correct. 13 years of kits. It's hard for me to remember what's in some of those kits. And we've always done pretty big kits with lots of fun things inside. So I, when I bring out a stamp set from years past, I don't remember if it's last year, two years ago, four years ago, but most of the stamp sets from our recent years past are still available in our store. So there's lots of opportunities to still get them. What happens is when we release a kit, um, once the kit sells out, then we release a new kit and all the contents of that kit goes into inventory as separate products. So maybe you only liked one stamp set or maybe you only wanted that word die. You'll be able to get those things separately once the kit retires. But our kits are a good value and we have another one coming up at the end of this month, a little later this month. So um, I did want to address one thing. I saw a comment in the last video and I, I was so flattered because somebody said, Gina, I really like your videos, but stop putting that filter on your face in your front camera. I don't have a filter on my face. This is me. There's no filter. <laughs> so thank you so much for that comment. That was one of the comments that absolutely made my day. Somebody mad about my filter and it wasn't a filter. All right. So um, in my video for Simon Says Stamp, I did this card in red this style card in red, and I used gold embossing powder. So what I thought I would do today is I would do one in maybe navy with silver embossing powder just for a different twist. You can always go and watch the video over at Simon Says Stamp for ideas. And then if we have time, I'll try to do a second one in red. I always like to try to do two because I like to give away two, but you never know how much time something's going to take. So let's get started. And I'm going to show you a couple stamp sets here. This first one is Sparkling Snowflakes. Now let me find my uh, remote so I can back up a little bit here. There we go. Um, and of course, I have no white cardstock on my table. So let me do that as well. So Sparkling Snowflake was a stamp set that came out a few years ago, and it's got some pretty big, beautiful snowflakes. It also has some really, really pretty greetings in it. So it has Let It Snow, which is nice for winter or for a scrapbook page. Maybe you guys like to scrapbook your holidays. Blessed is the season which engages the whole world in a conspiracy of love. You know, I love that saying, and I've done it more than, well, I've done it more than once. I'll do it again, just in different styles. May peace, love, and joy be your gifts this season. And if hugs were snowflakes, I'd send you a blizzard, which is really nice for all winter long. So this is a great big, bold set that you can do this similar technique with. Now, there's another stamp set that was released. I know this one was released last year because um, I remember 
this one I remember vi vividly working on. This one is called Sparkle and Shine. And this has a nice big snowflake and it's got a split in the middle where you can stamp a greeting. And it does have some really nice strip sentiments in here, but you can also do an ornament. You can turn the snowflake into an ornament and you can also do a Christmas tree. And it's got some extra little snowflakes and a cap to turn anything into an ornament. So that's kind of nice too, because you could, if you have both of these, you could use these together and make this snowflake an ornament or this one an ornament. So there's lots of fun things to do with that as well. I like the splits in here for the greetings, but I thought it might be fun to actually bump the greeting out a little bit. So I'm going to put this one away for now, although I probably will use one of these strips sentiments in my card. Now the other option, if you want a much bigger snowflake, is to take a stamp set like this and then get your Mandala Maker 2, and then you can expand on it by adding longer points to the ends with designs like this or this or these. You know, you can expand the size of the snowflake, making it bigger, making it more stick-like, and um, taking up more of the front of the card. So I think this snowflake with some of these designs in here would be really good if you wanted to do a bigger design. Okay, so let's, um, let's see here. Do I have anything else on the table? I do not. I don't have anything else on the table. I have a couple other stamp sets for greetings that I might want to use and everything's falling everywhere, but I'm going to stick with this one today because this one I think even more of you might have, although I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping this doesn't create another situation, you know? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I think I might like to make this into a mini slim line. So let me find my mini slim line dies. And of course you don't need the dies to make a mini slim line card. You just need to be able to cut rectangles, but this one could fit. Oh, that's going to be really tight. Could work though. Um, this one would definitely be too big, but I kind of like that. Let's try it. Let's go with this one and we'll make a mini slimline card. So I'm going to start by cutting a piece of white cardstock. You know, Sue, that's a really great question. And I don't know, I'm not involved at all in the ordering of what Simon Says Stamp does. Uh, they do what they do and, um, they base it on the year before. I've been doing Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Timber for four years. Every year my stamp set sells out and it sells out very quickly. And every year they increase the amount that they buy. And unfortunately, you know, one of these days, one time, they'll, I'll probably do a stamp set and they'll order way too many and then they'll be stuck with a lot of them. And all of their thinking, you know, becomes justified. It's such a hard thing to judge. None of the stamp companies have a crystal ball. So the way we really do our ordering is we look at what happened last time and we try to do a little bit more if it's sold out. It's really hard to tell though. And I can tell you, if you want to go to the front shot, <laughs> I can tell you honestly that I have overbought many of our stamp sets and I have literally thousands of stamp sets sitting on our shelves in our warehouse that have been there for years. Um, thinking that I knew what I was doing, thinking this is a home run. This is a hit. There's no way we're not going to sell out of this. It's really hard. I've been in this business for gosh, you know, close to, well, I've been in this business for over 20 years. Um, I've been making videos for 13. My business, my company has been in business for 15 it is so hard to judge, even with all the knowledge that I have, how what's going to sell out and what isn't. And when you're doing something that's a limited edition, you have to be really careful because if it's a limited edition, once that event is over, the only thing you can do is either donate the product or throw it away. You can't sell it because part of the event is it's a limited time and here are the dates when it's available. So I have a lot of respect for the amount of... Uh, uh, you know, knowledge that someone like the people at Simon Says Stamp have, and they do a pretty good job of, you know, getting it in under the wire. Um, but, you know, you just never know what somebody's gonna, what's gonna catch. So um, 
Next year, I'm sure they'll order even more because it sold out so quickly this year. But let's get back to this because this is going to be a great card and a lot of fun. All right, so I'm going to go with my embossing magic pad and we'll go to the overhead. All right, hey, Tom. <laughs> I got to see you for a second. I haven't seen you. How are you? How are you doing, Tom? Doing great. Are you? Yes. You having a good day today? Yes. Good yeah. weekend. It was, it was uh, great fun. It was. It was a lot of fun. It was a good weekend. A few requests for a warehouse sale. Oh, a warehouse sale. Ooh. Um, well, you know, we could do that. I don't know that we could do it here in our warehouse because we're not zoned for it, but we could do it online. It's just um, the stuff that's in there. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. Um, Got a few you, bicycles. Usually at the end... <laughs> bicycles. <laughs> Usually at the end of the year, we do a clearance sale or we do a warehouse sale. We put, you know, overstocks and things like that online. So look toward the end of the year. And here's my warning. At the end of the year, we're going to have another sale. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use this stamp set. I'm going to use some Versamark ink and I'm going to ink it up real well. Well, I appreciate all of your lovely sentiments. Okay, now remember this one, you know what? I'm not doing the right thing here. I think I wanna do this in navy. Does this look too dark or should I use blue denim for this card? I wanna use silver embossing powder. Do you guys like the blue denim or do you like, um, do you like navy better? Let's get your opinions on this one. Okay, um, I do like blue denim. Blue denim is um, a nice deep blue. It's not a royal blue per se, but it's kind of a royal blue. You like the navy better? Okay. All right, we're going to go with navy. Yeah, this might be a little bit more like 4th of July blue. See how that looks with the red, like red, white, and blue blue. And this is a little bit more Christmassy. Okay. All right, so I'm going to cut this down. I'm just cutting it to like three and three quarters, and I'm just leaving it long. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to use the embossing magic pad on this. See, I'm not paying much attention, and that's a problem. And then back to my inking this up with Versamark. Blue denim is a good color. And I don't know if you guys know, but we actually tweaked our blue denim color just a little bit. We think it matches really well, and um, we added envelopes for that color too. So if you're a blue color, a blue person for Christmas, now we now have envelopes. All right, so I'm going to stamp that right there. I hope I didn't move when I stamped it, but I don't think I did. I love how this image stamps. Holy cow, it's solid. And then I'm going to use some silver embossing powder on it. Okay. Get the little strays away. And then I'm going to emboss this first because I have to kind of figure out how I want to do the rest of this. So I'm going to emboss this first. I'm going to heat it up first a little bit. <laughs> Oh, that's silver. Silver's gorgeous. It's such a nice muted silver, too. I mean, it really shines, but it's so elegant. Okay. So let's take a look at that. Isn't that pretty? Ah, oh, that's snowflake. Okay. So now, let's see. I'm still debating about whether or not I want this to be a mini slimline or not. Yeah, we could do that. So what I'm going to do here just for myself is I'm going to take a white gel pen just so that I know where the top and the bottom of this is going to be about. So I'm going to, because see, I'm, I'm putting it in the center and I really want to be able to make this a little more even. So I'm just going to put a little gel mark up there and a little gel mark down here just so that I kind of know where the top and the bottom is. But I don't want to go right along the line because I don't know that I can cut it that perfectly. <laughs> okay. 
So we could add more designs to this if we wanted it to come out a little bit more, but remember, this is pretty tight on the sides, so we'd really only be able to come out there. So I say we decorate with sequins instead. All right, now let's do, let's do some terrific tape. So I have my quarter inch terrific tape here. My hat, my, this is, is this a quarter inch? This is not a quarter inch. How big is this? This is my eighth inch terrific tape. I think I may have said quarter inch on my video that I did earlier. So I apologize if everybody ran out to get quarter inch. Quarter inch is still beautiful. You'd be able to do a great border with that. So that's not a problem. Um, well, let's do it with the quarter and the eighth. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut off a piece of quarter inch and I'm going to place it right about here. And place it down here like that. And then I'm gonna take a piece of eighth inch and I'm gonna place it on top. So I'll have a thick line and a skinny line. See, I'm just eyeballing that. You can eyeball it too, I promise. Terrific Tape is the Gina K Designs double-sided sticky tape. It works really well for um, adhering boxes together and things like that, but it's also really fun for doing embossing techniques. Okay, so we've got one of, one of the, uh, one side there. Now we're going to do the other side. Now I'm just kind of looking at the space between here to figure out where to put it. So we'll do it right about there. And remember, this does not have to be absolutely perfect. If it's a little bit off, which this one might be a little bit off, that's okay. All right. And then we're going to do another one. Now I know I'm kind of wasting some terrific tape here because I'm using really big pieces, but I do want to be able to, um, you know, be able to trim it off and not get too close to the edge. Okay. So I'm really rubbing my fingers along there. Okay. Now for this card, since it's going to be a mini slimline card, I'm going to do some small snowflakes, but first I'm going to trim off these edges. So I just have a pair of Tim Holtz shears right here. And I'm not worried about a perfect cut because remember, I'm cutting all this off anyway. I just want to get it out of the way. It's okay if you cut some cardstock off. Okay, there we go. Let's get this out of here. Now, I want to add a couple more snowflakes in here because this is going to be a mini slimline card. Right. So it's going to cut to here like that. And I think maybe like a little bit of snowflake material coming in and around the bottom and the top. So we can use some small snowflakes and there's a couple of small ones in here. So we'll use this one and we'll use this one. These two little ones. Snowflake material, Tom. Did you catch that? Snowflakes. The snowflake material. <laughs> Okay, so we're not going to worry too much if these are perfect. We're going to make it kind of look like just a random border along the top. So I will do this one up here like this. And then I'll do another one over here. And yes, I'm going over the line. I know that's okay. I'm just not going into the spot in between there. And then I'm gonna use this smaller one. To put one here. I'm gonna do one in here. And I'm gonna do one up here just a little bit. And they overlap a little and that's just fine. Let's get this embossing powder back here again. Okay. Now I've, I've taken, I've done the snowflakes. Now what I'm gonna do is gently, I'm going to peel up the liner on the terrific tape. 
And now I'm going to add a little more embossing powder to those lines. Okay, like that. Let's move. I just poured embossing powder on my snowflake. There we go. And let's heat that up and see how that looks. And the reason I'm doing all this before I cut it is because it's going to cut stitches in. And once I cut stitches in, it's going to be difficult to, uh, you know, kind of emboss down into those areas. Yeah. I like this. It's so pretty. Okay. And that little area, I'm not worried about that because remember, that's all going to get cut off. See how that's going to look? Okay. So now we're going to turn it around and we're going to do the same kind of thing again. I'm going to clean this stamp because I got some, I pretty much poured embossing powder on it. So this is one that's going to go to the sink with an old toothbrush later for sure. Okay. So we're going to make this side a little bit different. So we'll start with the smaller snowflake and we'll do that right in the middle. We'll do that right here. And then I'm going to go with the bigger one and do one down onto the strip. And then I'll do one kind of up above the strip a little bit. I'm turning it just a hair. And then, so you're creating your own little blizzard here. Do this one up here. And we'll do this one down onto that layer a little bit. Now, last time I, um, put the embossing powder on first. This time I'm gonna take these off first. Doesn't really matter which way you do it, but I wanna show you that it works doing it both ways. So I'm taking the little liners off. And then I'm going back in with that silver embossing powder. And I've got snowflakes down there. So this would be a really fun card, not just for um, Christmas, but also for Hanukkah, because blue and silver is always a beautiful combination for Hanukkah cards. And you don't necessarily need specific stamp sets for Christmas and for Hanukkah. You can use snowflakes, and they're good for pretty much everything. Wintry, anyway. <laughs> all right, so there's my other side, all embossed. And what I really love about those um, lines is it gives us not just the same color, silver, like instead of using maybe a silver washi tape or something else, it, it gives us the same exact texture. Can you see the texture in there? So this one's sold out, Barbara. I'm sorry if this set is sold out, but I'll tell you what. I have a huge reorder coming of Christmas stamps, and this is on that reorder. So you're not out of luck, and it's only the very first week of September. So it's coming back in. This is a staple in our, um, in our collection. And like I said, if you don't have this one, go ahead and try it with some of the other beautiful um, snowflake sets that you have in your collection. They don't even have to be Gina K Design stamp, stamps. I'm sure you've got snowflakes in your collection. This one is another great one to do exactly this technique. This is um, sparkle and shine, and you could do it with this snowflake and use these little snowflakes to create your border. So, okay. I'm not as worried with that because I know it's coming back in. And I know I already ordered it because I beefed up our order for our Christmas stamps so that we would get them in time for our fall release, late fall release. Okie dokie. So it's okay. We're going to be okay. 
<laughs> so now I'm going to cut this using this mini slimline die. And remember, I have my white gel pen here. I can still see it in my white gel pen there. And that's how I'm going to know like how to kind of keep it all looking nice together. There we go. All right. Now, I would recommend maybe taping this down if you're going to, uh, to do this. And I have a little washi tape here I'm going to use. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you can put your name on the wait list for this stamp set if this is the one that you want. I'm going to be doing a lot more Christmas cards. And you guys know me, even though we're going to have a new Christmas kit, we have a new holiday kit coming out very, very soon, which I'm going to be making lots of cards with. You know, I always pull out old sets. So if there's um, sets you already have or sets you want, you know, if you want them and they're not in stock, just throw your name on the wait list. You'll get an email as soon as it comes back in stock. Okay, so that's where I want to cut it. I'm going to cut it. Here we go. Wish me the best. <laughs> Yes, we have a holiday kit, Allison. It's coming out um, toward the end of this month. We're planning on September 20th. It's just a matter of our dies getting here in time. Okay, that is really cute, isn't it? That's just a cute little thing. Now, I'm definitely going to go with a white layer, uh, a white card base, but for the... Um, for the layer behind it, I showed a trick on another video and I'm gonna show it to you again. So let's see here. I'm going to cut this down just a little bit bigger before I cut it with the die, all right? Because I definitely think the white is very striking for this card. Let's see here. So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit bigger. I will not cut the card, I promise. Just a little bit bigger like there, okay. And then just right about here, okay. No sense in taking too much time to measure for this part of the technique. So now, the cool thing about doing a border the way I'm going to do it is we've got beautiful silver cardstock and we've got beautiful gold cardstock in our collection. But if you want your mat to perfectly match, because you can see this cardstock, this, this embossing powder almost looks like it has a bit of a sparkle in it. And it's not so much that it has a sparkle, but it's got a texture. So you'll be able to see that when I take an up close photo of this, the texture that it gives, it's a fine detail, um, embossing powder. So it doesn't swell up quite as much as just a regular silver powder would, which in, in the case of a fine detail image, that's perfect because it doesn't swell up and distort the image. In the case of fatter lines like this, it gives it almost a leathery texture, which I love. That's why I'm so bananas over our fine detail powder. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my Versamark pad and I'm going to just squish Versamark all around the edge. And actually, I'm going to just turn my scrap piece of paper here to make it easier. Now, if it was cut down to the right size already, this would, um, I wouldn't need to use quite as much. There's a reason why I didn't cut it down with the die first, though, and I'll explain that in just a second. So if you're going to do this and you're following along, just do it this way. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I'm going to put silver powder all along the area that I squished Versamark on. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's get that out of there. All right. I just have to make sure that it's a big enough border so that when I cut it with the die, I'm not going to cut the border away. But I think that should be fine. Just check it. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. 
And you can see it's kind of weird and it doesn't look very perfect, but that doesn't matter because most of that is going to get covered. So let's pick this up again. Okay. I would highly recommend not cleaning up your powder first. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Put this aside. Now I'm going to use my heat tool again. And I'm going to heat this up. And you can see now I'm getting that beautiful shine and that beautiful texture. I'm not using a clothespin, so just be a little careful when you're kind of going around close to your fingers. It's hard to use a clothespin on this because you will definitely ruin the border. So I usually get to about here and then I just turn it around in my hands and then I finish it up on the other side. So the brand of embossing powder, AQ, I am using the Gina K Designs embossing powder. So you'll find that in our store under ginakdesigns.com under embossing powders. Um, I will tell you again, we have another reorder of the silver gold. I, I think we have some, but I, we have another big order of all of them coming because we know when it gets closer to the holidays, people really like to emboss on their cards. So I use the Gina K Designs brand. I use almost all Gina K Designs products in my cards because it's my company. But um, if I don't make a product, then I definitely reach out to other you know, companies and, and find something that I recommend. But that being said, if you have a different embossing powder, go ahead and use it. I mean, you don't have to run out and buy mine just because I'm using it. Okay, so I did forget to clean this up. And I'm going to clean this up so that I don't make a total mess. There we go. I'm not done with it yet, though. Okay, now with these dies, this was the die I cut the first panel out with, the stitched one. These are our mini slimline dies. I'm going to use the, the plain one because that is just a little bit bigger. And I want to make sure that I have enough of a border on both sides here. And I'm going to cut that out. Now, the reason why I didn't cut it out first is because all wafer thin dies will leave little dents in your cardstock. And actually, it's a very pretty look. It's got a little bit of a, um, I don't know, it finishes it off really nicely put, by putting that little dent in the edge. It kind of bevels it. But the problem with it is if you have those little dents in there and you can see, probably see the little dents, um, you can't get the embossing powder in there. So you'll have white spots. And we don't want you to have white spots. And the brand of the mini slimline dies, once again, are Gina K Designs. It's called our Master Layout 7 die set. We have different die sets that all layer together really nicely and create these kind of nice little borders and things like that. So you can see now when I put that on there, the silver matches perfectly. It goes right to the edge and there's no difference in the color. So I really like that look. All right. Now, I know we promised that we would try to get a second video in this week, and Tom and I will talk about that and figure out when we can do that. I'm also going to try to get another uh, five-minute card video in this week as well. So um, we'll definitely let you know if we're able to do that. Okay, so there is that pretty, this is really elegant, isn't it? Don't you guys like this? I think it's fun. Yeah, the silver border makes a difference. Now let's get a white card base. Uh, let me grab a white piece of card stock here. And I'm going to get my big paper cutter because I need to go a little bit bigger for this. So if you're a new card maker, making a mini slimline card base that fits the Gina K Designs envelopes and our die set is very easy to do. You're going to cut your cardstock down at the six and a half inch mark. And then you're going to turn it a quarter turn and you're going to cut it at the six and a quarter inch mark. So that's a six and a half by six and a quarter inch. It's, it's I'll say square, but it's not square because it's not perfect, but it looks kind of squarish. Okay, so here's my six and a quarter inch side. Then I'm gonna turn it to the six and a half inch side. This is the side we're gonna score on. 
I'm going to score this at three and a quarter inches. Thank you guys. I'm reading your comments while I'm working and you're all so nice to me. Thank you. Um, yes, the calcul the postage for a slimline or a mini slimline is no different than an A2 card. Both are standard postal sizes. This is actually like a check size. So they make check envelopes that these will fit in, but we also have our really nice envelopes that are a little bit thicker and self-sealing. I really like them. This is what one of them looks like. See this here? It's a really nice envelope and it's a little bit thicker, so it's more elegant, mm -hmm. um, but they fit in there. This goes just for a regular stamp. And the regular slim lines, the real big ones, they go for a regular stamp too because they are actually a business size envelope. All right, I love the pop of that with the white don't you guys that's so nice okay Alrighty. so now let's get this onto the card base here like this and then we have so many options for our greeting but I'm thinking, just as an example, I pulled a white flag out and we could put a white flag across with a greeting stamped in silver. That would look really pretty. We could also do the same thing with a navy piece and that would look really pretty. But I kind of like the way that looks because I feel like it makes everything jump out and then we can add some silver sequins in there and that will really finish it off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So now to pick a greeting, I'm going to use the sparkling, I mean, the sparkle and shine stamp set. And I think I will make this a Christmas one. So I'm going to use Christmas wishes. Now, if you're concerned about stamping and, or, you know, stamping on a flag that's already cut, well, let's not do that. Let's make it easier. Let's get a piece of white cardstock here and we'll do it the easy way. So I'm going to take this stamp. Now, when you have strip sentiments like that, I noticed there's some new people in here. So I always love to give this tip. If you try to put this on a block, you know, the, there's a chance that you might like twist it a little bit. This is a little bit not clean. I'm gonna clean it with my tidy towel here. Um, there's a chance that, you know, you might twist it a little bit and it won't be straight. So the way I put these kinds of stamps on my blocks is I just lay the stamp down and let it kind of breathe and take its natural shape. And then I pick it up with the acrylic block. And that means it's going to be straight on the block. Now I'm going to use a little embossing magic on here. And I'm going to stamp this. I want to make sure I have room. So I have a little guide here because I cut one of my flags already. This is going to fit on here pretty nicely. I just don't want to go too close to the edge. So if I lay my guide there, I know anywhere past here and over, I'm going to be fine to cut it out. So we'll ink this up. Yeah, the tape is so much fun, Pat. Definitely. It's a really fun idea. <laughs> I know, Heidi, I got to let the stamps breathe like a fine wine, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. The sentiment on a bar, that would work really good too, like just a bar instead of a flag. Okay. So I'm going to just stamp that. And then I'm going to get that embossing powder again. And I'm going to... <laughs> Yes, like a fruit salad, exactly. <laughs> there we go. So that's nicely powdered there. I know, right, Anita? I have to get my uh, clothespin ready. So I will get my clothespin because anytime you're embossing, it is really easy. Who is cutting the grass while I am live? Do you guys hear the lawnmower going through? Um, it is kind of a nice idea to use a clothespin to hold your cardstock. It keeps your fingers safe. It also keeps your nail polish safe. I actually melted my nail polish one time. <laughs> I melted a fake nail too one time. That was fun. Okay. So let's go. Let me just uh, let this breathe for a minute too. So it's nice and hot. There we go. 
go. Oh, see how fast that's embossing because the tool is nice and hot and it's crisp. I like that. So here is where you can really see the beauty of fine detail embossing powder in a delicate greeting like this. It's so smooth, it doesn't swell up and get distorted. So that's why I always like to use fine detail embossing powder. And there are great other kinds of embossing powders out there. So if you have them, use them and love them. But if you don't have any fine detail embossing powder, I highly encourage you to pick some up at some point in your stamping life. Okay, so I'm gonna just trim the edge off of this a little bit because it is a little long to fit in my die cutting machine. And I can definitely use this for something else. How many times do I say that? How many times do we all say that? Oh, I could use that. I could use this. <laughs> I've been down to like, seriously, I've been down to, let me cut this. I've been down to something like this. And I'm like, no, I can use that. I definitely can use that for something. <laughs> I save it. Paper hoarder. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to get my nice big uh, flag die. And this is from our Master Layouts 3 set. There are four different flag dies inside that set. And they, they fit a variety of different greetings that you'll have already have in your collection. Now to be extra safe, once again, I am going to, I lost my, oh, here it is. I'll use this. I've got a little bit of washi tape right here. And I'm going to make sure that that's perfect. Excuse my hair today. I really didn't care today. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> it's a mess. And then when I get it in the camera, it's even more of a mess. It's a little bit like a bird's nest today, but... Okay, there we go. does the just that little I mean even if you're doing an A2 size card and you just want a delicate little strip going across of embossed you know just to separate your greeting from the rest of the uh, the card using terrific tape is a great way to do it that double-sided sticky tape really makes a difference okay so this looks pretty nice and I like that the greeting takes up most of that flag too because you know it's a lot of white otherwise Alrighty. Now, let's go ahead and now we could pop this up and make it more three dimensional. That's really pretty. I really like this card. I like the way it came out. Um, let's do that. Let's add a little bit of foam tape to it. Now I do have a foam tape. This is the Gina K Designs foam tape. It is exactly the same thickness as my greetings here and that can be a problem actually it sounds like a good thing but I actually think it can be a little bit of a problem because um, if you get it a little bit outside on either side you know it can create an issue so cut your piece in half if you use a thicker you know a wider tape and then you have two so you can use this for another one and to store it just put it right back on your roll like that and it'll be fine. It'll stay there and it'll be ready for your next card. Okay, so we're gonna put this on here, right in the center, like that. And then I'm gonna peel the liner off. And then I'm gonna put it right across the center of the snowflake to pop it up. Making sure my flags are even. I'm gonna just touch it down and look at it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty even. Could go over this way just a little bit, but... Well, see, I didn't, like, push on it yet, so... That looks pretty good. That's going to have to be good enough, because I'm going to go for it. There we go. Okay. So now there we go. There's the card with that greeting in there. So now let's add a few snowflakes. Snowflakes, not snowflakes, sequins. Let me find my silver sequins. I have so many pretty sequins. These are really pretty too. These are um, 
the uh, galaxy sequins. So they've got some navy in them, but they really kind of sparkle and shine. But since we've got so much silver going here, let me see if I can find my silver ones. I do have some silver. Let's lay them out here and see if we like these or if we like disco ball, because I know a lot of you have disco ball. And disco ball is kind of our newer kind of sequence where we have more sizes. I don't know if we have more sizes in the silver or not. Silver's nice though. So let me get my picker upper tool and let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see this. So this, that is too fast. Okay. This is um, the Marvy Jewel Picker. I do like to use this. So like if we put a sequin there and we just to decorate a little bit, you know, have it sparkle, shimmer a little bit more. And it really sets this snowflake apart from the other ones up at the top. Yeah, I kind of like the silver on there. So let's go with silver. Sorry, Disco Ball, another day, another time. You know, I always love you. Okay, so I'm gonna get some Gina K Designs Connect Glue. And what I like to do is I like to just start by putting dots down first. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put sequins on the inside of the snowflake, and then I'm gonna put some on the outside of the snowflake. Now this card may have sounded like it took a long time to make. Once you get on a roll, you can just emboss panels and panels and panels, and then you know. Um, Oops, <laughs> not thinking. And then you can, you know, assemble your cards kind of mass style. But you could be like me too. And a lot of times I like to just make single cards for different people. I enjoy the card making process. I'm not in a hurry. And um, I might pick a very easy design for certain groups of people that I want to send to, you know, maybe people that might not appreciate all the hard work that goes in, you'll send something a little bit simpler. And then for somebody that really loves the cards, like my mom used to say, okay, all the handmade cards are a keeper. <laughs> um, those are the ones, you know, that you'll maybe take a little bit more time. Okay, so that's the first bit of sequins. You can see how pretty those look. And I think I'll add a couple more. I'm going to check them first, though, to see if I like the sequin where it is. I was thinking of putting one there on the end of that to kind of fill in the sequin a little bit or the, the uh, snowflake a little bit. And then we could put one like at the top. I don't know about that one. Let's just lay a couple of these out here. Just we really only need two top and bottom there. It doesn't matter how the sequins come out of the pack, they are always facing the wrong way when you go to grab them. I don't know what it is, that one didn't. But. So do you like having those extra sequins there? More sparkle? I kind of do. So um, that's a great question, Janet. Sequins, cup side up or cup side down? And Tom has the answer. He always says the same thing when it comes to it's his little trick to remember which way to put the sequins, where the cup should go. Cup side down? No. Cup. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Tom always calls it, well, he did in the past. He doesn't remember, but he says cupward. So cup upward. So, you know, almost like you could pour something into the little cup cup word. You don't remember that, Tom? I do now, yeah. You do now? <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since I put sequins on. That's true. <laughs> so we could use tiny disco ball ones. Let's see what they look like, because sometimes it's neat to mix sequins, too, have like a different style on there. And these are really pretty as well. They're just really tiny. And then maybe we could add one little tiny one up at the top here to finish it off. What do you think? I know. I'm, I'm like so confident when I said that, right? Oh, Tom will tell you. <laughs> They're all laughing. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm going to go with the silver like I originally planned. And I'm going to put them right in between here. 
just to add a little extra sparkle. Hey, that's the fun of live. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. But nobody can play guitar like Tom. He may not remember which way the sequins go, but... But I can't play guitar. I know which way the sequins should go, though. <laughs> Okay, here we go. So take a look at that sparkle. I like that. I'm going to just look here to see if we put one there and we put one down there. Do you like that, Tom? It kind of finishes it off and makes it look more stately. Oops. Or are you not interested in sequins anymore? <laughs> They're sticking to me, me and my dry skin. You like that addition? Too much? Too much. Okay, too much. So we'll let it go. There we go. We'll let it go just like that. All right, well, it is already 1250, so obviously I'm never going to make another card like this in such a short amount of time. So now, Tom, I think it's time that we give this card away. I like that it's different, too. It's different than the red one that I made. If you want to see the red one that I made, head over to Simon Says Stamp YouTube channel, and you can see the red one that I made using very similar techniques. Um, and, you know, you can get an idea how something like this would look in red and gold. All right, I'm cleaning up, putting the card there, and I think our faces need to be on the screen now. He's getting there. There's Tom, there's me, hey. hey. This is not a hairdo I intended for this morning, but it is what it is. Okay, so we have a mini Slimline Snowflake Christmas card to give away today to one of our wonderful viewers. And the winner is Heidi Walsack. Heidi. Ooh, Heidi. Congratulations, Heidi. Awesome. I know Heidi. I actually met Heidi. I love Heidi. That's great. Congratulations, Heidi. I hope you enjoy the card. Now, um, for later in the week, Tom and I are going to look for a time where we might be able to get a second live in this week. I hope we can because it's always so much fun to spend time with you guys. I really like this little card. Look at the shine. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see. We will let you know definitely in our Facebook group and on YouTube if we're going to do a second live this week. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime... Until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.